This is episode 304 of Super League Pod. We'll recap the last week in Rugby League, as always, from the fans' eye view, with loads of match reviews from those in the stadium and at home, covering such current references as VHS tapes, Gail Platt and Shannon Matthews. Not just that, we think we've finally drawn a line under the Academy licences fiasco, we wave off the NARL at least for a year, and we make blowouts an environmental concern. Strap in, it's SLP time. Hello listeners, welcome along to episode 304 of the Super League pod. This week um, you have myself, Wigan fan Mark, and I'm joined by a man who has just about come out of the clouds, um, and it's uh, Coventry Bears ground announcer Tim G. Good evening. Hiya Tim. So, um... The Bears had a great win that you were one of the very few people lucky enough to be be at the big butt for. Um, that came a day after your football team won promotion to the Premier League for the first time, the first time back in the top division of English football for, what, 60-odd years or so? so yeah, since since the war, basically. Yeah. So um, are, you still, are you still celebrating both those occasions uh, over a week on? Oh, yeah. My uh, Premier League mug arrived on... Uh, Friday morning, so that has uh, that has taken proud uh, place in in the cabinet and gets dig, dug out for Zoom calls uh, quite regularly. <laughs> and um, yeah, enjoy and yeah, the the Coventry result was was quite special as well. Excellent stuff. Well, do you want to tell everyone about our episode sponsor, who are also quite special? Yes, um, this episode is sponsored by Rob's Toy Shop where you can find a wide range of toys, gifts, rugby league birthday cards and more at Rob's Toy Shop on eBay. If you visit stores.ebay.co.uk forward slash Rob's Toy Shop and on any orders over £5, you can earn 5% cash back and also 1% of your order value will go into the SLP coffers just by putting SLP discount, that's SLP discount, at the checkout. Good stuff, good stuff. So what we got coming up today then... um... In the news, we'll be talking about the first coaching casualty of the season and the, let's say, conclusion, certainly in the short to midterm, of the uh, academy licensing um, goings on that we've been discussing for the last few weeks. Boy, what a waste <laughs> of time the 45 minutes or so over the last two weeks we've spent talking about it was, but we'll, <laughs> we'll get to that. COVID's back in the news as well, unfortunately, but more excitingly, we've got um, three great games from the Challenge Cup to recap with loads of fan views on the women's final, uh, the two men's semi-finals, and then we've also got some of Super League finds itself in the other results section um, alongside some other semi-finals from the 1895 Cup. So um, plenty for us to get through this week. Um, nothing sort of on the on the feedback angle really this week for us to, to crack into but lots of stuff fan views to talk through when we get into the main of it I suppose the only thing to other thing to call out at the moment at the top of the show Tim is your um, is your now a, a classy offloading centre I understand yes um, playing for the elite team that is TBC Furs as we've uh, become known in uh, Tritag Rugby yeah I've, I've cemented my place in the side as uh, centre and unlike most most centres I can play equally on either side of the pitch so <laughs> I, I don't mind don't mind which uh, which side I end up on but, uh, I, I, I like the way you said equally rather than you know equally well <laughs> <laughs> yeah no I've had a, I've, I've done pretty well I haven't got any uh, any player of the matches yet but um, holding my play holding my place in the side definitely Excellent stuff. So you're you're playing in the sort of tri tag leagues down in in London, which I guess is one of the great areas of participation that our sport um, gets. Yeah, I mean, there's that the, area at um, the venue I've got, which is a, one of the smaller venues. It's just in a park in um, uh, northwest London, and it's basically there's, I think it's two teams of six leagues so 10 in a squad that's what 120 people um playing every 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 thursday night and you get a, a early medium or late kickoff 
and uh, you get a game in instant. Though you know, there's substantial games. It's twenty minutes each way, so you get a good. So you get a chance to get tired. Oh, you definitely get a chance to get tired. Yeah, <laughs> and um, yeah, and that's one of the small. I mean, there, and there's also leagues of different standards and and different gender combinations. So we play in a mixed league, but there's also a you know single gender leagues uh, all around London, and there's an there's an elite uh, league that plays down in East London on a uh, one night a week. So if you are particularly good, there is a pathway to play uh, to play a better standard. But uh, I won't be troubling that journey <laughs> for a while because it's, it's just too far. Oh, uh, yeah. Yep. No <laughs> distance. Yep. Understand. <laughs> but no, I, you know, I, we are lovers of all levels of rugby league and all types of rugby league here. So um, it's nice when, when you're on now that you've got got into the swing of things with the tri tag to get a little bit of and a catch it's, up there. it's good because cause, yeah if you've got a rugby league brain you you can you can pick it up very easily and you know the defensive positioning and where you need to be stood and things like that a lot quicker you see some of the union players or touch players come in and struggle a bit with with how the sort of rhythm of the game and the patterns of it go but if you if you played a bit of rugby league you or watched it watched a bit even you pick it up very quickly Excellent stuff. Well, if anyone's kind of down, listens from down in the in the south east and um, fancies getting involved in a version of the game, that's a game that anyone can play. Yeah, and there's leagues all around the all country popping up. There's a big one in Leeds now, and also uh, the West Midlands have got um, Coventry and Warwickshire um, that play as well. So there's yeah, they sponsor to... the shirt, don't they? Actually, they're on the yeah, it's on, on the back. On the back. Yeah. Yep. Good stuff. Well, um, that's great. We'll catch up on more try tag stuff as the year goes along see how uh, tim's team progresses in the in the finals um but we're now going to move into news so into the news and lee centurion's head coach john duffy has left the club after an eight game losing run in the 2021 super league Duffy, who is 40, oh gosh, he's younger than he looks, had been in charge since November 2018. And his I don't final know, because game... it's hard to age a hobbit, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, he does He does look especially hobbity. <laughs> um, it's just that general sort of air of scruffiness as well. It's not just the sort of size and haircut. It's that general sort of air of... He's not quite in the place he should be. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, he's been in charge since November 2018, and his final game was a 40 to 16 defeat at Hull KR last Sunday. Lee replaced Toronto Wolfpack in the competition in December, but are currently bottom of the table, having lost all their league matches this season. Duffy, who played 202 games for Lee in three separate spells between 2001 and 2012, was appointed after coaching roles at Swinton Lions and Featherstone Rovers, and a long spell as Scotland co-coach alongside Chris Chester. I don't, I don't know. He was actually co-coach for that long. Was there? It was only a couple of seasons. He was on the staff. He was there for the a years, weren't he? He was involved in the setup for a long time. Uh, he guided Lee to the Championship playoffs in 2019, and then oversaw their switch to a full-time playing operation before the 2020 season, before the club's elevation to Super League, following Toronto's withdrawal. Assistant coach Kurt Haggerty will take over as head coach in the short term. Yeah, and with this being the first coach in departure of the season, lots of people wanted to get in touch. So we'll start with Jonesy LFC 7752 who said, the whole club as a whole were not ready for the Super League. They got in on a technicality through the downfall of Toronto. Lee have only been competing towards the top of the championship. They were not running away with the league as you would expect clubs that come to Super League with two or three quality players which they have not. Yeah. P.O.B. the Viking, Paul O'Brien says, have to feel for Duffy. Lee just weren't ready for Super League. Squad not good enough. No T-depth. Team depth, yep, probably. Um, don't think many people f- thought they wouldn't finish bottom. Would have been better staying in the championship and building for promotion. I bet a few Super League coaches happy that Lear in Super League 
as there could have been other coaches losing their jobs. <laughs> yeah, Tom Andrew said, an inevitability with that squad and Mad Derek as your boss, you would have to enjoy punishment to take that job till the end of the season. David Hunter says, was this the topping coaching gig of all time? A squad operating at substantially lower budget than the rest, pulled together at the last minute and during a pandemic. I feel for him, but really maybe getting away from a nightmare boss will work out in the long run. I would expect to see him pop up at championship level again soon. No, surely the toughest coaching gig of all time was Jimmy Lowe's and, and his mortgage. <laughs> I, I, um, I don't know that the budget is that much lower than some of the other clubs, but the central funding certainly is. And uh, yeah, the the last minute side is because you know Derek does put his money where his mouth is occasionally, but then will also throw all of the. Actually, no, he doesn't put his money where his mouth is because his mouth is everywhere. But he, he, <laughs> he stumps up um, cash for the club on a number of occasions, but then also throws his toys out of the pram and pulls it all out whenever he feels like it too. So it's, um, it's yeah, a bit tumultuous sometimes. And, and Gareth Carvel has also left his role of um, carrying bags or whatever he was doing there as well. I think he was like the welfare manager or something, wasn't he? I, I think know. he was director director of football or, or director of rugby or something. He was, yeah. But you could tell in the statement it was he hasn't done a lot. No. We don't know what he does. Off we goes. Kind of like when Kieran Cunningham had the same job there last time they were in Super League. <laughs> um, we did get a view in from EFC seventy eight JU as well, which is talking more about. Um, the future for Lee rather than the departure and he said Andrew Henderson's being targeted by Lee this is some sh- this is some shock for me as the wire assistant coach is targeted by Lee Centurion to become their next coach and get them to avoid that relegation spot and send them back to the RFL Championship there were rumours saying he had agreed to join them but Steve Price has responded with him and Hendo have got a good friendship and he will be quality and is going to do a good a sound job at the Lee Village Stadium so yeah, H- Henderson's a favourite, isn't he, to take over on a permanent basis rather than Haggerty, who's got the job on a on interim basis. I remember Kurt Haggerty's playing career at Witness and at Blackpool Panthers, um, but he's he's kind of retired young and been around as a coach for quite a while, actually, as Kurt Haggerty. But what do you make of of this? Was it was there any chance of John Duffy doing better than that than Lee have actually done? I don't think so. I don't, it's no surprise really at all, is it? And he was always going to have gone at some point this season. I think he probably would have admitted that himself. He's not what I'd call the most um, innovative or I don't want to say intelligence, probably the wrong word, but he, he doesn't come across as the most progressive coach in terms of his coaching either. So it doesn't it, it doesn't seem to be someone who necessarily would would bond a young squad if he had it or would look at other ideas and and ways of working he seems quite uh, a set way of doing things so i think that was always going to count against him and he just he doesn't really inspire much to me anyway i think at this level he that's where he would struggle isn't it i mean especially when you're trying to recruit players from high of a higher standard and I, I, you know, his reputation as a coach was built on his time at Swinton, where I think he did a, a really good job and had a team that played some decent rugby at times and also could tough it up um, <laughs> at times too. But the, he, I thought his sides at that stage were, were quite good. But a Super League, I just was never felt that there was a Super League coach in there um, at this stage of his career anyway where he hasn't really had real tangible success that you can measure and and that's no you know that's harsh on him but having said that he might be the perfect man to coach Lee in the championship next year so maybe this is a short term view here by the club that is is maybe the wrong call because they're not going to be a super league club next year from anything i can feel that that's happening no, you can't. I mean, it would be it would be some miraculous job to to keep them up, but even at this point, and you just can't see where it would come from. And it doesn't feel like there's there's no. I mean, the, in a, and even like the candidates that are that are being talked about don't don't hugely seem like they would do much anyway. I mean, 
Andrew Henderson is obviously the, the favourite that's been that's been linked. Um, Tim Sheens was linked earlier in the week before he took the, the consultant's job at Wests. 